Let's look at a chi-squared test for independence. Um, and it's closely related to the chi-squared test for homogeneity. And I'm going to talk uh, in a minute about the subtle difference there. This example really can be interpreted in both ways. Um, this is from a, ta a contingency table from way back, chapter 3, page 39 of Bach, Bellman, and DeVoe, of uh, admissions decisions for uh, magnet schools. I think it was in Houston. Um, by ethnicity, by ethnicity. So um, the students were either black, Hispanic, just lumped into one group, interestingly enough, Asian or white, and then the decisions were accepted, waitlisted, or turned away. And then we've got the marginal totals um, for all those, and those are going to be very, very useful for looking at our expected counts in just a minute. Um, and our question is, are these variables independent? The very the categorical variable ethnicity versus the categorical variable uh, admission decision. That's the one on top. And um, so you can think of it as a test for independence if you think of it as one group, the one group of students who applied to these magnet schools, and you look at them and you look at two categorical variables that you could use to describe each person. They are either accepted, waitlisted, or turned away, and they are either black, Hispanic, as one group, or Asian, or white. So that would be thinking of it as a test of independence, and that's how I'm going to phrase things mostly. You could also think of it as a test of homogeneity if you think of these as three different groups, the white applicants, the Asian applicants, the black Hispanic applicants, three separate groups, and then you want to know is, are there distributions of uh, the admission decision, the distribution of this categorical, categorical variable, are those the same um, kinds of distributions, so they look uh, equivalent across the three groups. So it really just depends on whether you think of these as three separate groups of people that you're comparing, or one group of people and you ask each person what their identifier is, uh, their ethnic identifier. Okay, That's really why these things are mathematically identical. Um, you can either think of it as different groups or one group labeled in different ways. Okay, So the first thing with all of the chi-squared stuff is to get an idea of what the expectation is if there's if we, the null hypothesis is true, homogeneity or independence. If they're independence, well, let's let's look at an example first for just one number, and then I'll um, give you the the whole table. Um, and of course, I'm gonna I'm gonna work through this. I'm gonna try to be quick, but I'm gonna work through this fairly much by hand. We're gonna do it on the calculator usually, but we want to see how we do all these steps by hand. Nothing is hard; it's just a little tedious. Okay. So, for example, the Asian waitlisted category, 49, is that high or low? Hard to tell just by looking at the numbers, okay? But let's look at it. Asians are 292 out of 1755 total. So the Asians turn out, if you do that percentage, turns out to be 16.64%, about a sixth of the population. So they should also be about a sixth of the waitlist total, okay? So, but we know the waitlist total. We know the total waitlist is 300, and so if there were Asians were not over or underrepresented on the waitlist, there should be 0.1664, that's the percentage of Asians overall, times the waitlist total, 300, or 49.92. Turns out, that's really close to 49, I happen to pick one, where um, that's really close to representative, what, what they should be. So that's not really very much higher low, it's a tiny bit low, okay? Almost certainly not meaningfully low. And we'll see when we get to like the, uh, the com components and the contributions of the chi-square, that's going to have a tiny contribution compared to some of the other ones. Okay, so... Um, we can just do that calculation nine times, um, and that's sort of the most low-tech way to do it. So, for example, black, Hispanic accepted, you'd say it's black, Hispanic, or 517 out of 1755. That's a percentage. Then just multiply that percentage by 931, and you get um, the, accept, the, the appropriate number of expected accepted students in the black, Hispanic category. Um, now, there's a clever way. Um, we're going to use matrix stuff on the calculator just a tiny bit, so I couldn't resist uh, saying there's a very clever way to do this as a, a single matrix calculation. If you make a three row and one column, a three by one matrix of the um, these guys, which conveniently come in a column, and a one by three matrix of this guy, and I might do a video to show you how to do that on the calculator, and you just multiply those together. And literally on the TI, you just uh, take this guy, if you may name like this A and this B, you just do A, B, and again, I'll show you, um, and just do that product, and then divide the whole thing by the number 1755. Turns out that that's exactly a way to do all these calculations at once. 
kind of cool. Okay. Now, this is actually what the calculator is doing when it does the chi-square test for independence, by the way. I'm sure that's how it sets it up. Okay, so um, however we want to do that, tedious way or a matrix way or just let the calculator do all the work, it's going to do um, get these numbers for expected. Okay, so the reason I did that calculation first before doing uh, assumptions and conditions, not that I just forgot the assumptions and conditions like I did on the other video, uh, recently. Um, it's that we have to know these numbers before we even figure out the assumptions and conditions. Okay, so the big assumptions are, is it counted data? Absolutely. Okay, and we are using the counts, not the percentages. Don't use percentages. Remember, don't put those numbers in. If they give you percentages, you should be able to, and they give you total numbers, you should be able to figure out the counts. Do it from the counts. That's, how, that's important for the calculation. Randomization, that's often necessary, but we're not actually interested. We're not so much saying, is this a sample? We could think of this maybe as this is a sample of everybody, but what we're really interested in is what, were their, what was their policy as exemplified by these actual students, these 1755 students? Were, they, um, were these variables independent for this sample? Okay, So it's not really relevant here. It's so often relevant, but for tests of homogeneity in a specific population, not as a random sample of some bigger population, it doesn't matter. This is the entire population. We actually have the data. Usually when we have the data for the entire population, you don't need statistics at all. This is an exception. Expected cell frequency, um, is it at least five? You bet. Okay. Um, the lowest is that 49.92, the weight, Asian wait list, and that's way, way above five. So we can totally use the chi-squared. Okay. So I want to do things a tiny bit different from in the other video to calculate chi-squared. Um, first is, well, the first step is very much like what I did before. Calculate the residuals, okay? Which ones are high, which ones are low? That's really easy. That's just the, um, the actual number, 336, for like for white accepted, minus 501.84. Let me show you where those were on the other lists. Let's see if I can get them both. Yeah, there were 336 white students accepted. And then we're going to compare that to what would have been the white accepted total if they had been independent. Okay, so that's just easy. Residuals are always the reality minus the model. And here the model is uniformity, homogeneity, uh, independence. Okay, so here's the residuals. Next starts to give us a picture of um, what the distribution here. So uh, not surprisingly for a, a magnet school program, um, looks like the, there was some intention maybe to uh, preference it to black and Hispanic students. A um, lot more accepted than for independence and a lot um, more and a lot fewer turned away or waitlisted black and Hispanic. A lot fewer accepted uh, among the white students than for independence and a lot more waitlisted or turned away. Asian it's pretty much like white although the numbers are smaller just because it's a smaller group. Remember the total was only 292 that was significantly lower than the other two the other two groups. Okay. Alrighty, notice that if you want to check of your arithmetic, if you do do this by hand, and again, we won't do it that by hand that often, these totals should all be zero because um, the, the excess of accepted black and Hispanic students should be countered by exactly the same deficit combined of the Asian white students. Similarly, all the totals should always be zero for the residual category. Okay, That's also why when we talk about degrees of freedom, degrees of freedom we haven't talked a lot about what the deep meaning of that is, and I'm not really going to, but it's basically how many truly independent numbers are we talking about. And the truth is that these residuals, there are not really nine independent numbers. If, if you just told me these four numbers, I could figure out these numbers because I know that they have to add to zero. If these guys add to 165.84, and so there's got to be, that's the total uh, excess of black and Hispanic and Asian students, and that's got to be countered by the minus 165.84 here. So these four numbers are really the only things that are independently variable. Remember, about statistics is all about how much variability, variation we expect. If we think of this as nine independently varying numbers, that's drastically wrong. But if we think of it as basically four independently varying numbers, and then these other guys derive from it, then um, that's correct. So that's why we're going to turn out to have uh, four degrees of freedom. It's the ro number of rows minus one, which is two, times the number of columns minus one, which is also two. So it's going to be door four degrees of freedom. Okay, so here's the thing that I'm going to do a little bit different. Um, when we turn, when the book turns to this subject of uh, homogeneity and standardization, they bring up, or sorry, homogeneity and independence, they bring up the idea of the standardized residuals. Basically, these are z-scores. 
<clears throat> and they're going to give us an, an idea. Not only we're going to get a chi-squared number and a p-value, um, if that's an interesting p-value, and we're going to see it's very low p-value for this example, we can go back and say which of these categories, if if any, were were kind of more responsible for the non-independence. Okay, and hopefully you're already seeing this is not independent. In fact, I did an example way way back in one of my other videos was a qualitative judgment that this really didn't seem independent. Now we're making that a little more quantitative. Okay, so um, the standardized residuals are just basically z-scores, and they relate very well to the chi-squared uh, computation. What it is, is it's just observed, um, and I didn't mean to open anything. I would do it control O, I guess. Observed minus expected, and then divided by, that's the residual, just divide by the, the square root of the expected. So this is going back to like the root NPQ stuff. Um, this is really why the chi-squared formula works. That standardized residual says compare, look at the residual, like these numbers, and then get a sense of, well, is 210.74 big or small? Well, what you want to do is you want to compare it to the amount of variability this count usually would have. Well, if I'm counting, this really comes from back from the binomial um, probability model, really, then the amount of um, variability a counted quantity is going to have is roughly proportional to root n how many things are you, do you expect to see in there, okay? And so it's that root n that's really coming back in. It's not the root of the sample size, though, in this, in this setting. It's the square root of the expected number. So, for example, the white ex expe accepted, not expected, uh, the residual is minus 165.84. That's just what goes on the top. We've already calculated the difference here. It's a residual. Divided by the square root of, we have to just go back to the uh, expected value, which is 501.84, we get a pretty big negative number, minus 7.4. These guys are essentially z-scores. You can use your z-score intuition on those. That's a big difference from zero. Okay, Clearly, many, many fewer uh, white students were accepted than would be under an assumption of independence. Okay, And then we can get all the standardized residuals. And here, without even calculating the the chi-square directly, you can start to get a sense of, look at all these. This is These are nine z-scores. And they're almost all really huge. 12.73, that's a ginormous z-score. Minus 9.4, that's big. The only, ones, the only one that isn't pretty big is the minus 0.13. That just happened to be right on target. Um, and maybe the Asian ones aren't super big, uh, but a lot of the other ones are big. So that's going to tell us we're expecting this is not random. Uh, rather, this is not independent. Uh, these variables are not independent. And the chi-square is going to be pretty big, and the p-value is going to be small. Only a couple steps left by the, in the by hand calculation. Okay, remember uh, the chi squared was the sum over all the cells of observed minus expected squared over expected. Another way to say that, now that we've started talking about standardized residuals, is you just take those standardized residuals. Those are kind of like standard deviations. You square them to get variances. You sum them. That's the Pythagorean theorem of statistics. One more time, it's just the sum of squares of these crucial quantities, the standardized residuals. Okay, so we, I just went ahead and squared these guys all in place. You're starting to get pretty big numbers. Okay, you add them all up, and you get a whopping big number, 509.33. Now remember, just because it's 509.33 doesn't mean it's absolutely going to have a tiny p-value unless you take into account what the degrees of freedom is. But the degrees of freedom isn't a big number. The degrees of freedom is 4. Again, it's this 2 times 2, number of rows minus 1 times number of columns minus 1. It's 4. It turns out that if you plug that into the calculator with degrees of freedom equals 4, chi squared greater than 509.33, it cannot tell the difference between that and 0. It's probably 10 to the minus like 100 or something. It's just ridiculously small. Um, and so this, as far as the chi squared analysis says, we are absolutely sure these are not independent. This could not have just happened randomly, even if uh, these guys, um, these things wanted to be independent, but there was just some random variation. Um, sorry, it's not even close. Okay, so um, maybe in another video I'll do this, redo this, with, redo this with the calculator. But to be honest, with the calculator, if you just follow the book's instructions, it's not that, uh, not that hard. What we can go do is go back and just go back one more time and say, okay, we've got a huge chi-square, we've got a tiny, tiny p-value, essentially zero. And if we wanted to single out certain values that made that 
the, the independents, there's really a lot of them. Any one of these guys would have contributed quite a bit to a lack of independence. But of course, this one is the, the biggest one, and that's probably the one that the school system actually wanted to see, is that they want to make sure that a lot of black and Hispanic students are getting into this program because it's probably designed uh, for those students particularly. Okay.